Today we look at the new flagship product from the Concert Artist Series from Kauai. It's the CA901, replacing its predecessor, a very popular model, the CA99. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Piano facts, right? So That's Ted it. came to me today. He was like, I got two facts. You choose which one you want. First one was the piano that they used in Big with Tom Hanks dancing on it. Oh. Was it wasn't a real piano. I was like, that's a stupid fact. Right. Well, it, it was It was a piano it, any keyboard. It was a piano-shaped object, which right. is another another day. The other one was, what is beaver, leather, leather, and hammers have to do? Beaver, leather, and hammers. And I was like, whoa, whoa. It, <laughs> what does that have to do with pianos? And so I was like, okay, tell me. It has to do with the transition of... A hammer that was originally covered with about a quarter inch of leather. So original pianos, the pianoforte. By Cristofori and the leading manufacturer after him Arard. was Silberman. Well, then there was Arard pianos in the mid-1850s, I guess, and they had, you still see the leather hammers. Leather hammers. Way. But in 1833, a guy in Boston uh, came out with a wool-covered hammer. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, a few years later, a couple years after that, Henry Pape in Europe actually took beaver hats and cut, cut them up, beaver hats. beaver hats, okay, and made felt out of them and then turned that into not just a hammer, a tapered hammer, which is the whole reason how the hammers are still made today, how they're folded over instead of a piece of wool on top. That gets, or, yeah, if okay. you've ever seen an original Fender Rhodes hammer, mm -hmm. they're kind of hooked like this and they have a square pad on top. It doesn't actually go around the whole hammer. It's just a square glued pad on top. Okay. But once wool was accepted and the tapered hammer was accepted, they were made out of wool. And from that point on, you start getting the machines and then perfections of underlaying. And so the entire concept of building a, a hammer machine to where it cuts and tapers consistently goes into production of piano, okay. so that's a whole other chapter. Okay, well, so, you know, if you are new with us, sorry, we do start it's our videos. It's a piano fact, it's kind of nerdy. We start our, our videos with a piano fact, something that we enjoy looking and researching. Um, you the, know, Like I said, the first five, first week or so of videos was cool, because it was just like nerdy stuff you know. Now, we're, the, while, now we're studying. Now we're studying. Now we're studying. So, research. today we are looking at a very cool product. It does not have beaver wool <laughs> hammers, um, but it is somewhat of a hybrid. We were discussing this earlier, but we were looking at Kawhi's concert artist, the CA901, replacing the predecessor, the 99. Uh, the 99 was very popular. It, you know, it was, when you think about a manufacturer's top of the line digital, they're gonna bring their A game and they're gonna get the best sample, the best feel, their best features that they can pack in. And, uh, what kind of separated the CA99 and the before at the 98, but it continues here on the CA901, is that soundboard in the back. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. And so explain to me how are the, the, the thought process behind adding a piece of spruce at the end of the at The, the idea behind it is to give a more direct dispersed sound like you have on the back of an upright piano. Because if you look at the back of an upright piano, it's all spruce, right? It's all, it's all spruce and ribs. It's, yeah. you know, ribbed because it's, it's curved so that it can project sound. Mm -hmm. And Kawhi puts the same thing on the back here, but rather than have a bridge with vibrating, with strings vibrating on top of the bridge, mm -hmm. they place two transducers on top, which are essentially probably either blank, bald, or focused speakers mm -hmm. mounted against that board so that that board vibrates with the vibrations that the instrument is putting out from the bass and mid uh, level amplifiers. So yeah, so it's trying to use a natural speaker that's with the, the capabilities of a, a piece of spruce like 
on a piano to when, get it to when, vibrate. You, when your strings strike and your, uh, the string vibrates and it resonates your big piece of spruce in there or like a guitar or a violin when the strings strike they're actually the most of the sound you're hearing is coming off of the top wood vibrating and holding that sound just like it is on a guitar which is what they've done here they, they build a nice box mm -hmm. they've made it taller and they focus the speakers so that the box resonates yeah. and the speakers have you know you get do get direct sound from the speakers but the primary source of the vibration and making the instrument one is that it does vibrate like a real piano. You can feel it through the pedals, you can feel it through the keys. And if you wanted to pull a corner off the wall, it's gonna bounce the sound off of the wall. Cause remember uprights are designed to go up off of a wall and disperse the sound. Uh, even though it's a lot of fun to, on a, on a real upright to take the front off yeah. and play that so that's coming straight at you. But here uh, on digitals, that's, that's not quite possible yet. But at the same time, it does have that acoustic uh, ambience of the sounds coming from directly the instrument, but kind of all not right at your face like a like a speaker. And on this one, you know, the the the, the element of design is all about making it look like an upright piano. On the 701, which is the model right below it, it's a little bit more of that digital piano style that you've seen a lot um, in the Clavinova line and the predecessors of the CA line. Um, this kind of full, full full box that looks like an upright piano with the you know the music rest that folds down, the key lip that goes up and it closes up real nice. Um, it looks very beautiful in a home. Um, it also comes in you know satin black, polished ebony, white. We have the rosewood behind us today. Um, I loved the polished ebony. I, mm -hmm. I still do that in the black, and and maybe it's just because I'm traditional, but in polished ebony. This thing looks like a real piano. So it jumps up in price, of course, at the polished ebony price point. Um, believe they're sixty three ninety nine. It almost goes up about eight hundred or nine hundred dollars yeah. with the addition of polished ebony. Let's talk about what it feels like. It's the Grand Feel Three Action. That is um, a continuation of what they had on its predecessor. I do believe they updated the key tops just a little bit as far as what we noticed on the edging. It feels like it's a yeah. little bit more rounded on the edge. Smoother edges, uh, both on the on the lip and on the corners and on the keys. Uh, going and so we, front to back. you know, we didn't get, you know, that's not in the marketing, but it's something that we did notice while playing this. Um, that they did, they did say they made improvements to the keyboard. Um, the uh, the engine is is a beautiful sound engine. It's the SKEX rendering on the piano, but they've brought to you know brought to the new releases a brand new rendering. So um, the predecessor had their concert grand, the SKEX, the Shigeru Kawai, their nine foot piano sample, um, and it had different renderings of that concert grand is what they called it. This still carries that in it, still has all that options available, but it's added another rendering version, the SKEX competition, competition and rendering. And what a beautiful sample sound this is. And the philosophy behind that was, let's do it from the position of the player. So they're actually pulling the sample from the perspective of you're sitting in front of this nine foot Shigeru Kawai SKEX. And where, what would it sound like if you're sitting right there? And that's what they try to replicate in the 901 with their speaker configuration, with the mixing on that new competition right. brand. Um, and so, you know, we think it's important enough to listen to that uh, sample all the way through. They have eight different rendering effects that are on that. When you're in the piano sound, you'll see piano competition. And then there's eight different rendering effects or presets, if you will, um, that, that voice this instrument to like, you know, the, the, the romantic and the classic and all, and all these different, the excited. Some of them involve some EQ changes, but, and, and I know that there, some are sample changes mm -hmm. as well, cause it, it's not just all, uh, um, you know, sound manipulation there. there yeah. There's some different samples in there. And, and, and again, the sensitivity of the way this, this, uh, the, this, grand piano action they have it, it and how it responds to those each of those samples whether they're dark medium or, or brilliant i like that they use brilliant on there or brilliance mm -hmm. is is one of their parameters is it does affect the way that that you do play the instrument yeah uh, so let's listen and we're going to listen to uh, the sample coming out from our audio outs but we'll also have a mic on the back just to kind of pick up what it does sound like coming off of that soundboard on the back it's a kind of a cool feature um, and you're able to do a lot of fun things like play your music through it or have audio in on this. And we've run synthesizers through the soundboard before to listen to what, you know, 35 watts of power sounds like off of mm -hmm. that, that soundboard. Um, 100 and, uh, what is it, 145 watts of power on here, or no, 135, 100 watt per side, so, or 50, 50, 100 watts, and then the 35 on the sound speaker. We'll listen to it right now. We're gonna listen to just the, the competition sample off the SKEX rendering, uh, and then we'll come back, talk about a couple more features, and then we'll listen to the rest of the sounds.
Patrick, what do you think of those sounds? It sounds wonderful. I enjoy that the 901 is a very different unit than the 701. They both, you know, serve their place, but it's it's uh, it's cool to get that extra added bonus of having a wooden sound speaker in the They're back. Both fun to play loud. This one is funner. It's more funner. It, it, it's 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 more it's more gooder, and, and it just it's it's alive. It's mm -hmm. it's a blast to play loud on this thing. And so it still carries a lot of the great things that the CA99 had. Um, a lot of the voices are similar, but they did update the electric pianos. We'll hear those in a second. Um, still Bluetooth audio, Bluetooth MIDI compatible, so you're able to control it with a MIDI app, um, whether you're using uh, their brand new, they had the virtual technician before, but they've updated it and renamed it the virtual artisan. artisan. So, you know, they're going after that, you're the artisan. Well, night. it's more crafty mm -hmm. for a piano player. You're not just less, the technician, you're actually... Less geeky. Yeah, you're more, putting it together. More crafty. It's, it's, it's more it's, creative It's side. your art. No, it's yeah. whatever. No, um, but the uh, the virtual artisan available on, on uh, as the app stores. Also, uh, you can play your music through it, that Bluetooth audio. You don't want to connect Bluetooth headphones to it. That is something we get a lot of questions. Can I, you know, I have these really nice Bose headphone, headphones or these. Yeah, but there's a delay. It's got the it's latency. latency thing issue. And so that we're still not there. You know, Bluetooth has become a lot faster, even like I think 5.1. There's some, there's some numbers out there, 5.1, quick connections, but it's still just talking <laughs> about the latency of feeding the information to this. <laughs> Whatever. I remember when there was a guy in the in the grocery store with a Bluetooth thing in his phone, and it was echoing real bad between his thing. When it was just like years ago, and I thought, man, they're gonna have to work that out. But I think they, I think they figured it out. <laughs> yeah. I think it, we're all expected on anything that plugs in the wall nowadays. I want to talk to Alexa, R.I.P. Alexa, is that a thing? Like yeah. Alexa, you know, her she's on her way out. But they want to be able, you want to be able to talk to your technology. You want to be able to control it. Tell it what to you do. Can use Are we an talking iPad, about leather? Your phone. Something? You can use uh, different things to control the uh, um, the apps with this. Yeah. Too. So it's just it's a, a fantastic sounding instrument. Uh, the capabilities, the technology that that it it can work with. Um, it can be recorded very well. I think one of the coolest features again is miking up the back. Um, but let's take into take a listen to some of the other sounds. Or did you? I have one last thing. Yeah. Because I like this as much as I like that competition grand sample. They they they. I'm peeling back this plastic, and it, it's a non-glare um, cheek display, block. Yeah. yeah, display, cheek display. So when you're looking at it, you're not seeing bounced light. Mm -hmm. And then you can also turn it off so it goes dark and it just looks like a regular piano. Yeah, so it's got a beautiful LCD display if you haven't seen these before. Um, they work fantastically. It's like having your phone there or something, but yeah. um, looks beautiful. It lights up when you're using it. It goes dark when you're not using it. Um, a lot of the capabilities that are built in there you can control from a phone as well where you can change effects, voicing, rendering, your virtual artisan, all those things. Uh, very easy to work with and Touch makes screen. a lot of sense. Um, and so really easy to control. We're gonna go through it right now and, and click through and show you all a whole bunch of the sounds off of here. There are 96, we won't touch on all of them, but we will listen to some of these cool electric pianos, the organs and some strings and stuff. So let's take a listen.
Patrick, you got to try playing these electric pianos loud because was, the whole thing vibrates and comes alive. It's like playing a real Fender Rhodes or a real Whirly or whatever. It's what's really cool awesome. is I'm glad you said that because it, it, the way that they break down their electric pianos isn't like vintage electric piano one now and, and electric piano two, like all these weird obscure names. It's actually like Tyne, Tyne or Reed uh, instruments. So you know if you're going Wurlitzer or going Rode, Rhodes, um, it also has the, the CP. Yeah, the CP70. It's got yeah. the Yamaha Electric Baby Grand. I guess it'd be a CP80 though, because there. it's got the 80. Yeah, probably, yeah, CP80. Um, but you have, yeah, you have the electric. And grand. then it has all the effects. You can go in and turn them on and off, and uh, turn off the tremolo and, and the chorusing and phasing. You can exaggerate it. And I like that they have one that's got chorus built into it, mm -hmm. and then they have one that's got a little bit of the phase built into it. Comes in at sixty three ninety nine right now. Uh, the CA nine hundred one. Uh, if you do want it in polished ebony, which does look beautiful, there is a price increase again on that. Um, so I think you be ready to spend about eight hundred to a thousand more on the. But you know what? I think they play and sound better in polished ebony. I know you think I'm crazy when I say that, but then again, your car does run better after you take it through the car wash. That's true. That's true. I won't argue with you there. <laughs> um, but yeah, the CA, the CA Series Concert Artist, if you've owned one before, if you have suggestions on which model might make more sense, um, they do have right now the CA 49, the 59, those at some place will, some point will be updated. Um, and then the 79 and the 99, or sorry, 7901, what is it? 901 and 701. 901 and 701, sorry. But they, they uh, have updated those as well. Um, and uh, just fantastic instruments all the way through. Gets a whole bunch of awards as the Concert Artist Series. Um, definitely worth checking out. But this, again, is their flagship, the 901. Um, again, it's the only one that's kind of shaped like an acoustic piano. Has the best action, the Grand Feel 3. All the best sounds, that new competition grand. Um, Beautiful sample. And then also, you know, have recording capabilities. But really, the shining star is that soundboard in the back. Um, Absolutely. And so just a fantastic instrument, really, for anywhere. This is one of the top-of-the-line digital pianos that you can buy. Um, feels great, sounds great, can't recommend it enough. Um, if you guys have played one, please leave comments. If you owned one, again, please help people make the right choice and maybe one that you didn't make or one that you would make again. Um, Ted Barslew, I'm Patrick Marr. We're here at Alamo Music in San Antonio. Thank you for watching.